Hello, everyone, and welcome along to Betting Weekly Game Bet Match. It's the tennis betting podcast brought to you in association with Bet Rivers, your hometown sports book. Uh, no week here, a new week, and it's a, for the final ATP Tour 1000 of the year. And it's the final trip across to the continent for our senior ATP Tour handicapper, Sean Calvert, who's joining us now live from Paris, where the tournament gets under tomorrow. It's the ATP Tour Paris 1000. Only the one tournament this week, but it's a big one. The top 10 in the world are in action, and the number one tennis handicapper is in town as well. Sean, how you doing, mate? I'm all right, thanks. Yeah, I just paid nine nine euro sixty for a for a, a Stella over the road, so I'm already I'm already off budget. So I've got well, to be careful. Can I can I just uh, we well, I have to sort of comment about this. Like you know, a Stella in London is about well, you might pay about seven quid. Okay, yeah, you know, seven quid in, in general bars. If you go to like a swanky bar, you're paying nine quid. This wasn't swanky. Well, okay, but the, in New York. In New York, a lot of American people obviously watch this show, and a lot of American betters watch this show. They'll be thinking nine sixty cheap. New York is like fifteen dollars for a Stella. Fifteen dollars. Yeah, yeah. It's got to go a long way, though, hasn't it? It's got to travel all the way from Belgium to the States. Here in in France, you know, it's it's around the corner. So... But it's not like the prop. Honestly, the, the bit the Stella in in America is gas. It's like very gassy, very gassy beer. At least you got a nice Stella there. I mean, I was in the bar with you and we had a couple of Stellas. We're nice Stellas. Yeah, I'm not a connoisseur like you are, mate. I, I, I mean, it all tastes pretty much the same to me. I had one in um, Antwerp. Was it last week? I'm losing track of the time here. I know. Whenever it was, I was in Antwerp. Um, I had one there. It, it all tastes the same to me, unless it's markedly different, like a huge difference. I wouldn't, I wouldn't notice the difference. The, the, well, the thing is, how, what's the what was the difference in the price in Antwerp to Paris? Mm, it was cheaper in Antwerp for sure. Yeah. If you're going down the Champs Elysees, you're paying. You're paying, I won't be going there. Don't you're worry. You're paying fifteen dollars for it. I'm for not it, going down there. Don't worry forward. about that. Um, but the one thing that did shock me when you told me about your Stella uh, eight nine pound sixty story, the one thing that did shock me, it, 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 you got a forty five minute taxi journey. Did, journey yeah. to, you got a forty. You actually got a cab. It must be you know, in the season. You must have. You know. You know why? Because when you go to Paris Charles de Gaulle uh, to get here in Bercy, you have to get a, a train, like an over overground train, and then you got to change to get the um like the metro thing so that that's that's hassle I, I don't mind a direct train i don't i don't want to be messing about with two different tickets you got to buy another ticket you got to get two tickets you got to change you got to walk a bit and i think bear c from what i've seen outside i think bear c station is closed anyway all right so which i didn't know but now i do so i'm i'm happy for once that i'm i'm literally staying about 45 second walk from the front door of the, of the Accor Arena. So I, I don't intend to, to venture much further than that, to be honest with you. We were at the, we were at the venue last year and um, there's a little underground station there in the metro station. Yeah, there. but it's shut. It's oh, closed. Right. It's just some sort of issue. It's got a big old calendar and lots of dates in red that are kind of marked. And, and this this current time that we're at now is is in the middle of one of those dates. So they're doing some upgrades or something. I, obviously, I don't speak French, so... Um, it's closed. That's all you need to know, closed. really. You're closed. Um, the uh, not entry. Uh, they asked my French lesson. For the I've just been called out for, for for bad French for for one word. So there you go. She said well, bonsoir. I said bonsoir. She said there's the English menu. I said, can I ask you how you knew I was how how you knew I wasn't French? She went, oh, it's the way you say bonsoir. I was like, okay. So there you go. You look a bit French. I think you get away with being French. I, I clearly, I can't. <laughs> as long as you don't speak, just be that be that little mime artist. Of that. It's not happening. Go down Notre it's Dame, a little blue and white top, the black and white top, and a bit of mime artist. I think you'll get away with it. This is this is not happening for sure. What was that mime going... artist name? What was his name? What was it, it was the... Marcel Marceau. Marcel that Marce... Marce... That's who. That's who you should. Yeah, yeah. I, think I can see a bit of him, Marceau that's Marceau. Not... Yeah, that's not me. He come call... he come through qualifiers last week in um, in, in Vienna, Marcel Marceau. He's very good player. No, uh, yeah, it doesn't say much, but he's a good player. Uh, anyway, <laughs> let's move on to this week. Last week, I'll tell you, before we go, we've, we've done a lot of travels. I'm going to do a little um, show next week, or when the tennis season's gone over, I'm going to do a little, so we're going to do some different videos for us to keep the content going in the off-season. I'm going to do a little video. I'm going to do the top 10 trips that I've been on uh, and rate them up from one to number 10. And like okay. the ten and all, and all the way up, just 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 um don't, don't don't give us away any clues, but bear that in mind. I might I might ask you to do a similar kind of thing. I know Marrakesh will be very very high on your list, but uh, well, I uh, like Marrakesh apart from the tennis. <laughs> what about the, the the hotel? Must have been. I mean that that was the hotel Racine. That was all right actually. 
It was all right. I'd stay there again. It's, it's no problem. It's fine. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, not for Sealy. I would be saying it. Be yeah, you wouldn't there. stay there, but I, it's, it's no problem <laughs> oh, for me. No, I definitely wouldn't be staying there. Um, but last week, Vienna was a fantastic trip. Really great tennis. And the tournament had just been won by Yannick Sinner, beating that Daniel Medvedev. Them two were the best two players. Uh, throughout the week, I thought, you know, Rublev, our pick, got beaten in the semi-final by Sinner. Played well, but just found Sinner playing the big points a little bit better. And now we move on to Marseille. Uh, sorry, Marseille. And we go over to uh, Paris, where we have the final ATP Tour 1000 event. And uh, it's a good one, isn't it, Sean? The top mm. 10 players in the world are here. In what kind of shape they're going to be in is, is, is a different matter. But they're all here, and they're all playing for the final big prize before the Tour Championships in Turin in, in uh, what? Two, two weeks time now uh, mm. over in Turin. Um, before we look at the draw, before we look at the matches as well, um, you've got the trend, you've got the conditions, you know the history of this court. You can tell us how fast it is. We were there last year. It seemed quite quick. Um, what are your analysis here and what have we got to look for when we're looking for a winner? Well, they lay these, they relay these courts every year so they can make it whatever pace they like. Very rarely does, does Bercy be the same pace year on year. So it is a case of just wait and see really. Even looking at last year when we were here, it's interesting because often if you ask players what the pace is like, they often disagree. Last year, Djokovic, for example, said said that last year was quicker than previous years and Medvedev said it was slower than Vienna. Um, so it's two totally different views from players that played, I would imagine, most of their matches on the on the centre court. Um the courts the courts do differ in speed generally. Generally, the centre court is slower. Last year, the CPI, the court pace index on centre court, was around about 36, 37. On court one, it was about 38, 39. And on court two, it was about 39, 40. So the general rule of thumb is that the outside courts are slightly quicker uh, and the centre court is slightly slower. But as I said, it, can, it depends how they've paced it. We'll have to see. I'll, I'll be there. 11 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, and I'll have a look. But it averages 81% holds, 74% first serve points won, uh, 40% tie breaks. It, it's it, It's been sort of reasonable pace, I'd say, the last few years. Not too quick, not too slow, which is probably how they want it. Um, as far as underdogs are concerned, 32%. It's not it's not a great tournament for, for underdogs, really. 32% on average win in the tournament as a whole. But round one is normally the best round. 36% of them win. Mm, not a bad record there when you consider how sort of the average underdog must be. I, I can imagine underdog being a lot higher than plus 175, which is would equate to 36.4. So 36.4 as a percentage is one plus 1.75 as an odd. So that's a decent return, I think, especially when you consider the some of the some of the player or the, the caliber of player in this tournament as well. So that's uh, that's quite an interesting factor there. Do you put that down to players having a long year? Coming towards it, yeah. really, not, yeah, just just jacking yeah. it in, not really, not really. You've no. got to be careful in Bercy because some players they come here, they're they're in, they're maybe slightly injured. They want to protect themselves. Some players, frankly, just can't be bothered at, mm. at this stage of the season. They they'll they'll sort of put a bit of an effort in if they're losing. You know that the effort to turn it around isn't always there, and you know you you can understand it is. As I said before, a very very long season, and if you aren't feeling hundred percent and you haven't really got that much to play for, then you know, the apathy does does occur here quite often. Uh, we always say, well, I, I mentioned quite a lot in this podcast about the need for players to, to win their event. And obviously there's there, there's a few places up for grabs in in the big money um, ATB Tour finals, which are in two weeks away. Currently five players have guaranteed their spot. Djokovic, Alcraz, Medvedev, Sinner and Rublev. Uh, Stefanos Tsitsipas is in sixth, Zverev seventh. Holger Rune is the one who's probably really a little bit... Uh, uh, sort of in trouble there. Well, not in trouble, but he's the one who's probably a little bit there. Who's, who, who could be shot down on that? Yeah, uh, they're, they're playing sorry. for one place. Sorry, mate. They're playing for one place, really, aren't they? Yeah. In, in effect, which is the place that ruins it at the moment. And the people who've got a chance of well, the, the two players who've got the best chance of really doing that: Taylor Fritz, who's in nine, and Herbert Hercas in ten. Hercas obviously got to the final uh, today and got beat in Basel against uh, Felix Auger. Seen a great comeback to form for Felix Auger. Seen there, brilliant. We said he him. would, didn't we? A few weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, and and one of our. Um, subscribers on the YouTube channel uh, put a comment at the bottom. I'm oh, sorry, I haven't got it in front of you, so I apologise for your name. But he said on the comments section on our on our preview last week that he's betting Felix or had to see him. He thinks he's going to come back to some form and he thought the draw was favourable to him. So very well done there. Congratulations on your yeah, Felix. We, we did it a few weeks too early, didn't we? We did it in 
was it Beijing? Yeah. So we did it probably about he got three beat or four one, weeks. Yeah, we probably did it three or four weeks too early. I think the idea was right. You know, it, it's a good idea. And, you know, he, his timing uh, was was better than ours, clearly. So congratulations to that pick. I think it was 12 to 1 or 16 to 1 around that kind of market to win the tournament. So congratulations on that. So there are a couple of well, there's one place up for grabs there. So obviously Holger Rune is in, is a little bit vulnerable. Taylor Fritz and Herbert Herkash are two players that you would think are very motivated to go deep in this tournament. Whether they do or not, we'd have to wait and see. Uh, just to give you a little bit of how the tournament runs, it's a 64-man tournament, and the top eight seeds get buys through to the second round. So the way the tournament is, is they're through to the second round, the other players are playing for the right to play the top eight seeds in that second round, and then the other eight seeds have got to get through the first round. So in the top half of the draw, we have Novak Djokovic and Holger Rune. I think that's a repeat of last year's final, isn't it? That's true, is it? Yeah. Yep, yeah. Holger Rune. So that could be a quarterfinal. Yannick Sinner is up against Andre Rublev in a repeat of this week's semifinal in uh, Vienna, where Sinner won. Kasper Ruud uh, is scheduled to play Daniel Medvedev. Medvedev looked good last week, um, this week, sorry, in Vienna. And Kasper Ruud is, isn't playing at all well. I'd be surprised if he gets that far. Um, in the bottom half of the draw, we have, uh, sorry, that is in the bottom half of the draw, Ruud and Medvedev. And we also have Sitsapas against Alcraz. Alcraz obviously returning here, Novak Djokovic returning here. We have absolutely no idea what condition they're going to be in. But the two of them are number one and the number two seeds. And they are number one and number two in the betting with Bet Rivers. So here are the outright prices in Paris. Novak Djokovic is the favorite. He's got a brilliant record here. He's plus 175. Carlos Alcaraz is the second favorite at plus 350. Yannick Sinner, a recent winner in Vienna, is $6. Daniel Medvedev is $6. Stefan Sitsabos is 20 to 1. Alexander Zverev at 20 to 1. He finds himself in the bottom half of the draw, I believe, Alexander Zverev. Uh, we have Andre Rublev at 20 to 1. Taylor Fritz, as I said, needs to do well here. 33 to 1. Felix Auger is seen a recent winner or win this just today in Basel. He's 33 to 1. Grigil Dimitrov, 33. Ben Shelton, 33 to 1. And Herbert Herkas, who also needs to win a finalist uh, in, in Basel this week. He is 33 to 1. There is obviously some dangerous uh, floaters in the draw and obviously some seedy players who are scheduled to play some of the top eight seeds as well. Um, John, what do you think of this draw? I mean, I looked at the draw myself and I didn't want Yannick Sinner to go deep this week because I thought Sinner could could do well here when that section of the draw he is. He's in the, I think it's in quarter two. He's in Q2, was, yeah. I thought it was quite yeah. weak. Um, but he's obviously won uh, this week, which is which automatically puts me very wary of betting him again. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know what you think about this draw. What do you think about where, where the value lies? What do you think of the easiest section and where any value is? I'll quickly just go through the trends because you do get some big price winners here um, reasonably regularly. You know, Rune, as you said, won it last year, 50 to 1. Kashanov won it at 40 to 1 in 2018. And Jack Sock, I remember very well because I had him 80 to 1 winner here in 2017. You get a few peculiar finalists as well. If you can... Name me actually. Could you name me the two qualifiers that have made the final in the last eleven years here at massive prices? Uh, I I I I know the answer to that question is no. If you can one, tell me what, what country they're from, one's Polish and one's a Serb. Uh, Laszlo Jerry. Nope. Um, no, I can't. I don't know. Okay, so Jerzy Janovic. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Made the final here. I think he lost to Ferrer. Remember rightly. Massive price. And the other one was Filip Krajinovic, lost to Sock in 2017. The, the only number one seed, incidentally, to have won this tournament this century, indeed, since Andre Agassi in 1999, is Novak Djokovic. He's done it four times. No other number one seed has won this tournament for getting on for 25 years. So, um, yeah, just going through the trends there briefly, you do get some, some decent price. I think it's always worth taking a bigger one this week. Because, you know, we it is a little bit of a lottery. We don't really know who's going to be in good form, who's going to be fit, who's feeling well, who's who's up for it, who isn't up for it. Um, just looking at the job, obviously Novak Djokovic is making his return here. He's not played since the US Open. Um, great record here. Taking him on isn't something I really want to do, but as far as the bottom half of the draw is concerned, I've got, got the sheet down here. Um, I'm not convinced about Alcaraz. So... I think if you are looking for a big price outright, and obviously I am, then um, then the bottom half is the way to go. Yeah, Novak Djokovic hasn't played. I think he played Davis Cup, didn't he? Um, after the yeah, US Davis Open Cup final, sorry, yeah. but very very disappointing. Their last last scene last night in the, in the Rugby World Cup final, sitting next to Rita Ora, he didn't he didn't look very happy about that when the camera 
pandied on, on Novak Djokovic. You're going to have to. I don't know who Rita Ora is, to be honest. I've heard of her, but I don't know who she is. Oh, she's, a, she's a big singer. Well, she's, one, she's a singer. I don't know. I don't, she's a singer. I don't know. I, I wouldn't know one of her songs, but she's a My singer. knowledge of popular culture is, is quite shocking, to be honest. <laughs> she's, she's a singer, and she was seen sitting with uh, Novak Djokovic in the, in the Rugby World Cup final last night. So um, I didn't know that was on either, so I'm, I'm learning a lot this One by already. South Africa. Roger Federer oh, was okay. crying in the crowd because he's obviously from South Africa descent, so Roger Federer was there crying okay. away. And, yeah, beaten, beat 30, I think 16, 15, or yeah, 16, 15, they beat New Zealand. I bet the draw, 16, 15. Oh, unlucky. that's unlucky. Anyway, uh, Shanghai was the last time we saw our crowds. Now, what would your, you know, what, your plus 175 number, Djokovic, that's 36.4%. And Carlos Alcaraz is a 28% chance. So you're looking at like a 64, 65% chance that one of those two win, according to Bet Rivers. So you're saying, what they're saying is couple those two, it's minus $2. Um, mm. that would be, you could have minus two dollars those two, or like plus one seventy five the whole field. I want to be on the field. I I could see the reasons for coupling those two in a major. I, I I'm not sure I see the reasons for doing it in the Paris Masters at the end of the season. Like you know, I've already mentioned that there's quite a few big price winners, finalists. You know, it's not a, it, it's hard to call this this tournament. Alcaraz is up. You know, he's obviously got physical problems. He's a foot. To a foot problem combined with a lower back problem has kept him out since Shanghai. Is he just doing, is he just turning up here to, to sort of tune himself up for a, a real kind of final push in Turin? That would be my guess. Mm. I, I'm not sure that he's going to win this tournament or even make the final, to be honest. So I'm, I, Djokovic tends to pace himself a lot better, doesn't he? He's the master of it. He's, you know, vastly experienced. He knows what his body can do, what his body can't do. Um, of those two, if you're asking me who's more likely to make the final, I would say Novak Djokovic. Oh, without doubt. Carlos Alcaraz, since Wimbledon, has been beaten by Tommy Paul, Novak Djokovic, uh, Daniel Medvedev, Yannick Sinner, and Grigor Dimitrov. Um, he hasn't looked right since Wimbledon, has he? For no, me? hasn't looked right at all. And especially in Shanghai against Dimitrov. He didn't, he didn't look well at all in, against Dan Evans in the match before. So he may have rushed to come back here. Uh, a little bit too early, but uh, obviously the focus will be in Turin, I think, for that, for him to end the world. It wants to be the end, end of the season world number one and, and win that tournament as well, the big money as well. But uh, plus 350, I won't be behind Carlos Alcaraz at all. So we've said there's some history of underdogs. We sort of questioned the, the two market leaders in the draw. Where Where's the, the value? Where do we need to be head to look at some value here? I know, I'm not sure whether you're going to like this, but I've, I've taken Corda here at 50 to 1. I, I'm not sure you're going to be on board with this given how you've binned him off <laughs> well, <laughs> little well, prematurely but um it's one I'm, of the ones that when he, if he does win it i'll be absolutely i was with you at the early part of the season i i, I was loving him i had these chances i was betting him for majors i was being everything and just i just just couldn't accept some of the performance he threw in and just i question his nerves sean that's more than anything oh yeah that, that's that's, well. that's that's without doubt i mean if he gets to the final i wouldn't I wouldn't be certain he's going to win it. Obviously, it depends who he plays. If actually, it doesn't matter who he plays. I, I still wouldn't be sure he's going to win it. But I think twenty-five to one to make the final is 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 decent. Um, I'll talk about his match with her cash later on. But you know, he, he's got the game to beat anyone in this field on his day. It's just a question of when his day is. I mean, last week he was favourite, wasn't he, in in Basel or joint favourite? Yeah. Um, lost in the first round to Echeverry, who we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, in a way, I'm quite quite glad that he lost in the first round because he didn't expend too much energy, and that's obviously vital this time of the year. Did find his form in Shanghai, you know, and Astana. Um, he's also he's already beaten Medvedev, beat Medvedev in um, in Shanghai. Uh, he'll probably have to go through Medvedev again, so he's shown that he can beat him. Kasper Ruud for me is a is not a worry in that Q3. He's facing a tired Herkash in round one. I think there's a route there for him. I don't mind backing him at fifty to one. I certainly wouldn't back him. As we said last week, I certainly wouldn't back him at sort of five to one to win a, a you know, as a favourite in, in a slightly smaller tournament. But at these odds, I think, you know, you, you take your chances at 50 to one. I'm happy with that, to be honest. You would think if you beat Herkash in the first round that he, he should get through the quarterfinals. You would, the draw is pretty favourable for him, isn't he? I mean, yeah. the second round opponents, Batista Agut or who, I can't remember Batista Agut's playing. Uh, Le Hecker, Batista Agut's playing. Yeah, you would think that he's got the be better of that. And then he probably runs into Medvedev, who could potentially be tired after Vienna. He, he's, he's gone out early, so he's quite fresh. So I can see the reasoning behind it. I, I can, and I, and I really want to fade Casper Ruud as well. So I can see the reasoning out of it. Just, the, just he's done, he's done me up a few many too, too many times. I will bet him. I will bet him because you've said you've said it, but um, you know, it's 
I just don't want to. It's my. It's a bet that I'm be having because I don't want to miss out, rather than I'm betting it because of like. I'm yeah, we're not going to be right betting right. him at like five, six to one every week. That's absolutely hundred yeah. percent sure. But I think he's. I be, I still believe. I don't. I, I still believe he has the ability. That that's not my view on that. Hasn't changed since the start of the year. I still think he's got the quality to win a Masters one thousand. Absolutely certain about that. Has he got the mental strength? Well, it remains to be seen. But at these odds, as I say, in this quarter. I'm quite happy to to take that price. So 50 to one, Sebastian Corder. Um, quite ironic. It's the final, one of the final tournaments of the year, and we're giving one final chance. Well, we probably won't. We'll probably be on him again next season. Probably be on him in, in, in yeah, uh, January we'll be, in Australia. We'll be on the yeah. Australian Open, so we probably won't. But uh, but it's been a funny year with Corder. We we had such high hopes for him at the start, and uh, we sort of dropped them. Well, I dropped them towards the end of the season, and it's sort it's sort of ironic that last year, last tournament of the year, we, we're going in with Corder here, but. I do look at that draw, and I agree, I agree with you, Sean. That that section does look winnable, but uh, the, I, I'm interested to see your thoughts on Hercash. We know he's obviously going to be um, be struggling, but motivation for him to have a big week to to, to get that eight spot. We'll see if that's important to him or not. But uh, we're going to come on to the matches now, and Hercash and Quarter is one of the matches we're going to talk about. It's the penultimate match we're going to talk about. Uh, the first match we're going to talk about though is Laszlo Jerry minus one fifty two. He plays against Lucas Van Asher. Uh, now Van Ash is a, a very capable uh player here and he's a french one he's gonna have a lot of french support here uh laszlo jerry is minus 152 improving on the the harder courts uh not so great on the indoor course he's almost always a clay quarter you'd have him down as a clay quarter but there's not going to be many fans in attendance tomorrow i know sean will be in attendance but these early it's matches in the first they're not going to be they're going to be highly not going to be a huge amount of a crowd um but he this one could be quite interesting because he's obviously playing a Frenchman in Paris. Um, Van Asch is minus one, oh, sorry, plus 123. As I said, he is a real talent. Um, how do you see this one going? I think we have to take Van Asher here. I mean, just on differing levels of motivation as as I see it. Um, Lazo Jerry, as you said, for all his improvements on hard courts lately, he's never won a match in the main draw of Paris and he's 3-6 win-loss at all levels here. So he's only won three of nine matches at this particular tournament he pulled out the Stockholm semi-finals last week with sickness um I don't think it's too much of a stretch to suggest that his opponent will be massively more motivated mm. here you know Van Asch is playing his his home tournament he, he lives in Paris uh he studies here actually he's at the Paris uh, Dauphin University studying maths he's not just not just a tennis player he's um studying maths as well at university he also won the French Open boys title here a couple of years ago and he's going to be definitely going to be more rested. He has not played since Shanghai. My my view on that is that he's going all out for a strong performance here, as you would expect. I just think his the motivation levels are, are hugely different. So I've taken Van Asher here, here, as you said, at plus one twenty three. Bet Rivers. Yeah, the two have never met before. Um, but look at the indoor form this year. Three and two for Laszlo Jerry indoors. Uh, Van Asher has won eleven of his sixteen matches. Obviously, a lower, little of a lower quality of opponent in that. Uh, he does come in a bit in the tournament with a little bit of poor form, though. He hasn't won in his last two. Uh, but he reached the semifinals in Orleans in the Challenger. And uh, Jerry got to the semifinals in Stockholm, repeat by Monfils. But this is um, this is this is a different match. I, I, I like this at Van Asch bet. Um, the money is just starting to come for the Frenchman. But if you can currently get the plus 123, which is the best price in the world currently, with Bet Rivers, um, you want to do it now because I don't think that will last long. Uh, if you're looking at the spread, it's one and a half. Uh, Lazo Jerry minus one and a half, minus one twenty-two. Van Ash plus one and a half, minus one hundred five. And the total here is twenty-two and a half. Twenty-nine different markets available on the Bet Rivers website for you to play on this tournament in Paris. The matches start at six a.m. tomorrow, but this match isn't scheduled for tomorrow. This match is scheduled. It, it, is, it is on tomorrow. It's on at four p.m. I think. Oh, is it? Oh, local, yes, it's local at, time. Sorry, yeah. my, my mistake. It's on at eleven a.m. Eastern time tomorrow obviously the, the, the clocks have changed uh, in europe so it's 11 a.m eastern time laszlo jerry against van ash uh, in paris the frenchman here is our first bet at plus 123 uh, the next match we're going to talk about is kek manovich uh meanwhile kek manovich against thomas martin etcheverry etcheverry had a, a, a it's a bit of a he, he had a good sort of french open didn't he and then he went off the boil great it. french he's, open yeah got the yeah, courses didn't he yeah, and he's coming back to some signs of some form at the moment. And uh, 
He's an underdog here again against Kekmanovic. He's plus 106. Kekmanovic is available at minus 130. Quite a heavy favourite. Kekmanovic has won their only previous meeting, which was on a grass, uh, sorry, clay court at the French Open in 2022. Now, this match isn't scheduled for tomorrow. This match is scheduled for Tuesday. Um, what are your thoughts on this one here? I mean, if you look at the spread, it's one and a half. Minus 105, kick manager giving up one and a half. Echeverry is plus one and a half, minus 122. And the total is 22 and a half, minus 117 over. Very similar prices to the Van Ash uh, against Laszlo Giri on the prop markets. Yeah, happy to take Echeverry here. Uh, again, I just feel like kick Manovich is the kind of guy that is, is ripe for an end of season tank, to be honest with you. He's one and three win loss here in the main draw, kick Manovich. Um, He's not had a particularly great season. I, I can see him just not being massively motivated. He's certainly been that in previous years here. And he's playing the guy in Echeverry who's improving fast, very, very fast, and, and on hard courts as well. Um, when they played in 2022, that he's a very different guy now, um, Echeverry, to, to the one that played Kekmanovic then. Um, both of these guys played Holger Rune last week in Basel. Echeverry was incredibly unlucky to lose. I don't know whether you saw the match. It was Rune got a dead net cord followed by a double fault to win the last two points of the match in the final set tie break. So incredibly lucky, as he often is actually. Rune he gets some luck. He really does, um, and that that was a, certainly a stroke of luck for him because actually very won one more point in the match. He won a huge eighteen percent more second serve points actually very than Rune, but he only converted one out of ten break point chances actually very, while Rune took two of his five. So it was a bit of a steal, that one, from, from Holger Rune. And prior to that, um, Echeverry beat Andy Murray and the aforementioned Seb Corder. So that is very good form um, on indoor hard. If we look at what Kekmanovic has done against top 32 ranked opposition, of which Echeverry is now in the top 32, Kekmanovic has won one of his last 14 matches against top 32 opponents. And Echeverry has won four of his last nine. So... For me, all all things considered, I'm happy to take Echeverria's um, slight underdog here, Bet Rivers. Yeah, plus 106. Um, that is another line that is moving quite fast. So if you want to take the bit of the Echeverry, you want to move quickly now, plus 106. Remember, there's 29 different markets available on the Bet Rivers website. <clears throat> and if you do place a bet on that match or any of these matches in Paris tomorrow, you'll be able to live stream the match from the comfort of your own home, your tablet or your laptop. And that match is on Tuesday, not tomorrow, not on Monday morning. Tuesday, kick Manovich, Echeverry. But if you want to take the plus money, you want to do that now. So head to Betteria's website and take that price now. And the next match is an interesting one. Two big servers, Talon Greeksborn, minus 220, up against Christopher Eubanks, the American at plus 170. Christopher Eubanks had an unbelievable. Wimbledon broke through, but his form each week is progressively getting worse and worse after that really high of reaching win with he break to broke into the top 30 in the world but he seems to be on a steady sort of downward spiral at the moment greek sport uh is playing quite well at the moment he's up to 25 in the world rankings he got to the quarter final in basel got the quarter final in, in stockholm and uh, if you compare that to eubanks he's lost his last three matches and indoors this season he hasn't won a match out of three matches so he's a heavy favorite here the dutchman greek sport minus two two and a half on the spread at evens Greek, Eubanks is plus two and a half, minus 127. And the total, not surprisingly, given the serving stats, these two is very high at 23 and a half. And it's minus 113, both for under and for over. Uh, Talon Greeksbore, minus 220. I, I can't see Greeksbore being struggled by Eubanks, but um, I'm sorry, quite surprised you put this one in because I know you like the underdogs. I'm not quite sure why you would. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see you've got to, you're going to make a case for the American here. No, but it, it it is on court two, which, as I said earlier in the show, is is the quickest court out of these three that they play here in Bercy, and um, this one just looks ripe for for tie breaks to me. Uh, as you said, Eubanks has predict predictably uh, rather fallen away, you know, quite a lot, hasn't he, since that Wimbledon quarter final breakthrough, and 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 prior to that when he made the the latter stages in in um, Miami. He's only won five or 13 matches since Wimbledon, but he does need a result this week to get into the seeds for the Australian Open. And that is a motivating factor. Mm. Well, it should be. I, I, I can't imagine that it isn't for, for Eubanks. He's currently 34th in the rankings. I think, if I remember rightly, Borna Chorich is ahead of him on 33, but Chorich's season's finished. So um, 
and Eubanks, I don't think he's playing next week in Mets or Sofia either. So this is a, a sort of last chance saloon for him to get into that top 32. Um, Grigsby isn't playing next week either, but he's still got Davis Cup to come, Grigsby. So his season is is far from over. We look at what they've done, these guys, away from Clay this season. Very, very similar service stats. Um, Grigsby, 68% service points won and 88% holds a serve. Eubanks, exactly the same service points won at 68% and 87% holds, which is just 1% fewer. And the return points won, both of them poor. Uh, Greek ball 33%, Eubanks 31%. So on this quick court too, the quickest of all of them, or it has been in the past, I assume it's going to be again, the 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 play here, if you're betting on this match, would, would have to be set one tiebreak for me. Over 12 and a half in set one is um, a 2.9 chance for Bet Rivers. Yeah, plus 190 there with uh, Bet Rivers. I sort of mentioned it, the, the total was 23 and a half, given their serve, and you expect that to be high, but there's no, that's, that's a nice price, the plus 190 on a tie break in the first set and, and on the court. I mean, it's interesting points you made there, Sean, two interesting points. One of them is on court two, which is the fastest. So bear that in mind. If you're looking for overs or you're looking for tie breaks, the court number two is the fastest court. And then the second point you made that, that is very important that Eubanks has the motivation to get into that seeded position for uh, the first major of 2024, which is uh, only two months away now, believe it or not. Uh, is it, yeah, two months. Is that right? Yes, two months. Almost two months. Oh, it's um, crazy. Yeah, it's two and a half. Two and a, two, yeah, two and a, two and a half. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's coming around too quick, isn't it? Uh, okay, the final one. Uh, sorry, not, not the penultimate match. An interesting one for us is obviously our pick, tournament pick, Sebastian Corder, 50 to 1, up against a very motivated Hubert Hercash. Now, Hercash, as I've said at the top of the show, he needs to go deep here and hope that Holger Rune gets beat early doors to have a chance to make Turin. He's made the final uh, in Basel today. Got beat by Felix Auger. Had a seam in two tie breaks. Um, he's not far to go from Switzerland across to to Paris. Um, but this is a pick a match minus one twelve. The spread here is one and a half, or whichever you can use the toggle or make whatever spread. Uh, the total is twenty three and a half. Again, very high. No surprise given Hercash's uh, record this year on the gra- on the, with the big serves and also his record with tie breaks um 23 and a half to total minus 114 for over minus 112 for under they've met three times before her cash leads 2-1 uh but the big one they met really one of them in shanghai already this year and they also met this year at the australian open the biggest match in round 16 and quarter come through a, a five set epics and a tie break in the finale in the final set um interesting here i mean i, I can i know the reasons why you're um you're opposing Hercas, obviously, because he's just come through a real epic rig and he's played a lot of tennis. I, I'm guessing that's why. But yeah. um, um yeah, the, the, but the second reason, obviously, on, on the flip side of that, the fact that that spot for that eight spot is there, the spot that he is playing well, he is hard to break, it is quick. So, so there, this one here is I'm quite interested to see your break since your analysis of this because I think this is a genuine 50 50 matchup, me. Yeah, Corder was, was underdog when he was priced up. I think those lines have moved a bit now. Um, if they have, what what, what price are they currently? It's about a, one point eight. It's one one minus one twelve the pair. Yeah, I, I I do like Corder here. I just think this is a really tough turnaround for her cash after after Basel, not just Basel as well, but Shanghai. He's played an awful lot of tennis. I know he's motivated, but it, it often doesn't work out. You can be as motivated as you like, but if you haven't got the legs, you you aren't doing it. Um. The last couple of times he's won titles. I know he didn't win the title today, but he almost did. He's he's really struggled the next match. Lost to Zhang. We had we had Zhang, didn't we? After we also had her cash to, to win Shanghai. I was more than happy to oppose him against Zhang, and he predictably lost that match. Um, and prior to that, when he won Marseille, where I was earlier on, right early on this season, he only just beat Shevchenko. I think it was seven six seven six in the third set in the match after that. He does tend to be a player that starts tournaments pretty slowly and, and quite unimpressively, but builds form as the week goes on. I think Corder has a great chance to exploit that. Corder will almost certainly be the one that's more, that's better prepared. He certainly had longer after his early exit in Basel. He's had a long time to to prepare for this. If you look at last three months at main level, nothing in it in terms of the service points, one return points, one totals. Corder 104, her cash 104, but it is Corder that leads the service hold and break totals. Her cash still not breaking serve anywhere near enough, relying so much on his first serve. His second serve stats aren't great. He's playing loads of tie breaks and fortunately for him, he's been able to win most of them, although he didn't today. And that's the downside of her cash. He, he, he plays too many tie breaks. He's not going to keep winning them. Um, 
So a slight edge to quarter on the whole break totals by 107 to 105. So I'm happy to take quarter here. Um, if you aren't backing quarter for the outright, and I, I can I can't fault anybody for not doing that because he you know he has let us down a few times, but I, I feel like he's a, a decent a decent pick to win this match. Do you still think he represents value at minus one twelve, considering he started the day around about plus one oh five? not ideal, but I still think it's a, a reasonable bet. Yeah. I mean, it's just going to be a lean for me, but because I've got him on the outrights, but if you're not involved on the outrights, I think Corda has a, a strong chance of winning that match. Now this match hasn't been scheduled yet, but you, we're guessing it's Tuesday. Could potentially be Wednesday. We don't know that they, they sometimes run it over for the players who played deep into the finals. The tournament before may even be Wednesday. So we'll have to wait and see when that match is played, but Corda against Hercash is certainly the, uh, the most interesting First round matchup in Paris. And if you want to follow all Sean's action in Paris, you can do so on his Instagram account at Because We Win and also on our Twitter account. Sean will give you daily updates from the French capital. Uh, and Sebastian Corda is our pick to win it and he's uh, our lean to win this match as well. So whichever we're going to play, we want to get with Sebastian Corda. The final match we're going to talk about is the young American hope, uh, Ben Shelton. He's up against Alessandro Davidovich for Kina. Ben Shelton is minus 240. Davidovich for Kina is plus 190. This match is tomorrow. It's an early start, 6 a.m. So you need to set your alarm clock if you want to have a bet on this one. 6 o'clock Eastern time. The spread is three and a half. Shelton minus three and a half is plus 110. Davidovich for Kina plus three and a half is minus 141. The total is 22 and a half. David Ovich Rikina is a player that I love to watch. I think he's got the, the game to beat anybody if he's on 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 song, but he doesn't hate him. He has too many off days. And uh, his record on indoors in courts isn't very good. He's only won once in four matches this year. And last year, he didn't win one out of six. Very, very poor record uh, on indoors. So Ben Shelton here, Big Ben, uh, a worthy favourite, but minus 240, maybe a little bit too short for me. Yeah, you don't want to be taking minus 240 shots at, at the Paris Masters, particularly ones that have played as much tennis as Ben Shelton has since the US Open. If you include the US Open, he's played an absolute ton of tennis. Uh, remember, this is his first real year on the on the ATP Tour. It's not like he's a seasoned veteran that's been playing for years and can sort of pace himself. I do wonder what Shelton's got left in his tank after the highs of the, of the US Open semi-final and then playing so well on the Asian swing, you know, Shanghai and Tokyo. I, I can't imagine. I know he's a young lad and he's fit and strong, but I, I wonder what he's got left for this. Davidovich Fakina has gone pretty well against biggest servers in the past. He beat her cash at Wimbledon um, not long ago. Went five sets all, as well with Berrettini at the US Open. Um, played uh, uh, Kyrgios pretty, pretty close as well. So he's not, I don't think he's a, that bothered by big servers. He's, he's a very, very good return of Davidovich. I don't think big servers are a, a major problem for him technique-wise. I think it's more a mental thing with him. I, I could sort of see him getting a bit annoyed if the aces fly past him, but, you know, Shelton's not John Isner. He's not He's not going to be hitting that many aces. He's a big server, but not that type, really. Um, Davidovich should be reasonably fresh for this. He withdrew from Stockholm because of a, an illness. So, he's for me, he's, he should have a lot more in his legs than Ben Shelton does. And if you look at the stats away from clay, protect the season as a whole away from clay at main level, Davidovich for Kina service points, one return points, one total of 102, which is exactly the same as Shelton. Now, if we isolate the last three months where Shelton has had his best part of the season, it's still Davidovich for Kina. That's that's either equal or slightly better. Actually Davidovich for Kina's total last three months, 104 Shelton, 103. You're right. in what you say that indoor hard isn't, the best conditions for Davidovich, but I think if you're betting in this match, I think the over 22 and a half uh, total games or even the over 10 and a half games in set one, which is a 2.75 chance of Bet Rivers, I think that's the way to go here. So that's it. And they are the big five matches of the day and of the first round in Paris. Preview few here by myself and Sean Calvert. There's some other great matches. Tommy pulled up against Richard Gasquet. We saw Richard Gasquet win. We saw him last year win a first round match against. Yeah, he, he played he rude, didn't he? He played Yeah, yeah Casper Yeah, yeah. He, he the crowd will, will massively got him over the line. He's up against Tommy Paul. Was not playing well. He's plus three forty. Potentially be a shot there. Gregor Dimitrov up against Lorenzo Massetti. Uh, Taylor Fritz up against Sebastian Bay. So there's some really good first round matches here. Head across to the Bet Rivers website. The action starts at 6 a.m. on Monday morning. So don't delay. Make sure you get your bets on nice and early. Sean will be there. You can follow him on their Instagram account, as I said, and our Twitter account, which is at Because We Win. Sean, just give us a recap of your bets for Paris yeah. on round one and the tournament winner. Yeah. So the, the match bets, just a couple of bets. I think you've got to be a little bit careful here in Paris with 
with um with your wages and i have too many um so i've taken etchaberry he was a 2.1 plus 110 chance with bet rivers it might be slightly shorter than that now etchaberry to beat um kekmanovic that is and the other one was luca van asher plus 123 chance to beat Laszlo Jerry in the outright. We took Seb Corder, or I did, um, at 50 to 1 each way. I'm with you. I'm not going to I'm not gonna desert you. We're in it together. A team is a team. But um, we're, we're cheering him on. So anyway, uh, plus 106 now is the price for it, Jerry. That's a little bit lower than what we expected. And Van Ash is plus 123, and that is the best price in the land. So if you want to bet the Frenchman, the very talented and very intelligent Frenchman. It's a very intelligent bet, I believe, at plus 123 to be Laszlo Uh You all remember to download the podcast, Benny Weekly Game Bet Match. You've only got a couple of uh, weeks now of the season. We're all over. And uh, hopefully we have some content between now and the and the start of the Australian Open as well with uh, some of our little bits and pieces we're going to put on the website. You'll see that in due time. And Sean, obviously you can... Uh, Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Betting Weekly Studios as well, so you can get all the content there, not only from the tennis, but also in the world of soccer and the Cricket World Cup is in action as well. Uh, Sean, enjoy your trip in Paris. Um, Thank you. you. I'm sure you can get a, a stellar cheaper than $9, but if you do have to pay $9, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. You'll be I'm okay. A, I'm about to go to an Irish bar, actually. You'll be surprised to learn. Cause... Not the, one, the same one we went to. We went to an Irish bar last year. It's not round it. Uh, did we? we, we, yeah, we the, that wasn't Irish, was it? That place? That it was, was an Irish a, bar. That you was just a sports Irish, bar. It was, it was an bar. Irish, it was an Irish was sports bar. Yeah. You took okay. Me. Well, this is a slightly different one. I'm going to have to get a taxi there, by the way. Your it's expenses gonna are going me, through the roof of this. I know. It's going to cost me 13 euros, this, apparently, according to uh, according to the app. Well, hopefully, so, it's seven, hopefully, it's seven euros and you have six points and you save your money. <laughs> we'll see. Well, I can't I can't get the tube, can I? Because that's closed. So, um yeah, it's the end of the season. I'm, 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 you know, I'm enjoying myself now. Well, have a great time, and I will catch up with you again on Tuesday. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your bets. Uh, take care, everyone, and hopefully, let's go and cash some tickets here in Paris. All the best.